Deezer has this program where they're gonna start tagging artists. One's gonna be called professional artists and the other one's gonna be called hobby artists, I believe. Are you serious about your music or are you just a hobbyist? One DSP is saying that they're not gonna pay you if you aren't doing serious artist numbers. Now, what are those numbers? Check out this clip right here. Professional artists, you have to get a thousand streams a month and something else, and you'll get paid almost double what the hobby artists will. All right, first of all, how many artists do you think consider themselves to be professional artists, taking it seriously, that got less than a thousand streams a month? All of them, probably. All of them? Yeah, all of them, probably. <laughs> it's definitely some people who just like consider themselves 99.2%. But I feel like that right there is going to be offensive to many artists. Yeah, I get good. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you didn't know, 90% of songs on Spotify last year got less than a thousand streams. I'm not saying it's the fairest because major labels will always have a leg up with algorithmic playlists and editorial playlists. All right. So you're talking about people who have over a thousand streams a month getting paid double the amount as artists who have small. 999. 999. You got less than a thousand streams. You're going to get paid half the amount of money who artists who have a thousand streams a month now he said that's not necessarily fair because major labels are always going to have a leg up a thousand streams a month isn't that it's, it's not crazy man i thought the bar would be higher and that probably made it as low as it is because of the argument he's trying to make let's let's, let's see it let's we're gonna let this finish out and we're gonna really get into these details though and editorial playlists sure. they will automatically always have double the price and it does kind of suck for indie artists who are just getting in it's like damn give me a chance we're all sharing payments and stuff like that as far as what we get from the royalties from streaming Correct. based on an ad pool so say for instance there's a billion dollars that's all they got so all little streams that we got have to be divvied up amongst us if we cut off the entire bottom and say y'all can't even monetize until you hit this tier and all that money gets pushed up it's Absolutely. the YouTube model. That is the YouTube model. All right. I like that last point that he mentioned. It's not like we're not used to this. We've seen a similar model in terms of you're not getting enough views, streams, you don't have enough subscribers. Once you hit a certain threshold, you get access to money, mm -hmm. features, and things like that. So I think that part is, is solid. The only thing is it's hard to take something away from people that they already have. Yeah. I mean, and, and even outside of music, I mean, it's basically... The sports model, you know what I'm saying? It's like the, the, the high school student that goes on to play college ball and then goes on to the, the NFL or the NBA, you know what I'm saying? So that's traditional sports because you got the NI, but the NIL deals have made even the young boys able to get money. Oh, that's true. That's so true. that's like now we're going backwards. So someone might call it prehistoric. I say this. We got to address the first, the first, first point that a lot of people are talking about. Like one guy said, this is going to kill it for any artist. I don't know about killing. It's going to ruin indie artists' careers. The struggle is already hard enough. To that, I got one question. I got one question. Not paying artists out for a thousand streams a month, that's not a lot of money. All right? So Deezer is paying 0 0.0064 cents per stream. So you're telling me missing out on six dollars and forty cents is gonna kill your career? I mean, I mean, you know, we talk about a month. You know, what I'm saying with six times twelve is seventy-two. You know, the average cheap distributor for the the indie artists at that level is between twenty and and eighty dollars. Uh -huh. You know, for the is it a year or a month? What's this show kid like? Twenty a month or twenty a year? I don't even remember. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way, bro. If if six dollars a month is gonna be the end of your music career, then look, man. There's a lot of tougher things in this business. You probably aren't gonna have a music career in your first place. Yeah, and they don't really believe that. They really they believe that they would have mobilized when that stat came out last year about all the songs exactly. that had less than a thousand streams. There'd have been pools of playlists. That's when you react without doing the math, <laughs> right? That's when you react without doing the math. Now, of course. What benefit does that bring? That's probably a lot of money on a long tail that they've given away to artists who some of them might not be serious or whatever, that the artists who are going to get paid double, once you do hit that threshold as an indie, those numbers might look sweeter for you, mm -hmm. right? Now, again, it's not like I necessarily agree that this should happen, but I think we got to make arguments on both sides. And there's a couple of really dope arguments that we should address, all right? So Austin Hole says, I see both sides. Could be nice to give people some actual incentive to promote their stuff and get to the page here. Mm -hmm. That's what I hear. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, for me, 
outside of even hearing the term, I mean, hearing the idea of I get paid once I hit this level, just feeling like, oh, I get considered professional at this level, having some level of measurement. But I'm, you know, I'm like, I can be more goal oriented sometimes, right? Just like everybody else does with TikTok and YouTube. It's like, oh, yeah, I want to hit that. So I can now, what was the thing um, on IG when you hit 10,000 followers back in the day? What was that that you had access to? Was that like. Um, you can go live, maybe, or you can. Well, what nah, was that? that was TikTok with the thousand followers go live. I don't remember what Instagram was. They were the first ones to do that, though. Man, it was big too. It might have been the verification stuff. No, it wasn't verification. Well, not get it. It was like, something like normies would worry about. Like I was a normal civilian, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like worried about this shit. What was it? Yeah, I remember. I remember TikToks, but I don't remember. Instagram. Y'all, let us know. Well, back in the day when you got the ten thousand followers, what was the benefit that you got on Instagram? I wish I could remember what it was. It might have been go live. No, you got to go back to that first, because that first comment made a good second point, too. What was the second point? But it also could also discourage people just starting and add a whole new sense of jadedness before they even get their music off the ground, though this might cut out some of the oversaturation. I completely agree with that. The oversaturation? Yeah, well, both sides of it is going to make those. But those types of artists, man, the artist that is getting 12 streams a month that feels like he's being cheated... That's the type of artist that will already be jaded anyway. You know what I'm saying? So this this is really just building on top of his or her frustrations. But the cutting out the oversaturation, right, because that same comment goes, well, you know, they talk about making people work for it. We know that one of the bigger complaints of that demographic of artists is having to work hard. You know, they like to feel like I should be able to just put the music out and streams will magically flow from this oasis of magic listeners that, Find me amongst the ten thousand other things they have to do. That's who. That's who. That's who's gonna be cut out. Yes. Because you know, yeah. to the point you made at the top of the pod, a thousand streams a month isn't difficult to get to. You know, you talk about pushing one song to the point that it's doing. I don't even say really well, just moderately well. Yep. Are you talking about having a catalog of of, of multiple songs that do? decently well. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not the most complicated number. Like, I could see if this was at, like, oh, you got to have a million streams a month. Then it'd be OD. Yes, You exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. But a thousand streams a month, bro, it's like, I've seen some people get that on accident. Yep. <laughs> not even monthly listeners. <laughs> yeah, just a th- exactly. Not even monthly listeners, just a thousand streams a month. So it's like, if, if there's an artist out there, that, and I know there will be, who feels like, oh, this is made to keep me out of the game. You know right. what I'm saying? This is made to to step on the little guy and stop me from succeeding. Then you already lost. You know what I'm yes. saying? You already you already put yourself out of the game, man. That so this right. ain't this ain't it's for you, but it ain't for you. Right. <laughs> and shout out to the Help Me Divine podcast. This is where this clip is from. Check out the YouTube page and all that. And in the comments, there's another one. W. Thompson Music says, "I'm not sure. I'm a fan of this idea." I think the difference between this system and YouTube is that we, the artists, have to pay for distribution to the various DP, DSPs. There is no cost to upload to YouTube. If Spotify is going to raise the threshold for monetization, they need to make it so the artists can upload their music for free without requiring us the use of a, the use of a label or distribution service. All right, here's a couple things to that. Mm, yeah, I don't agree with that. They need to? <laughs> You know, you can't say that at all, right? This is their business. Because it's not like they were benefiting or monetizing the distributors in that way anyway, Mm -hmm. right? They're not making that money, so it's it's not like we're missing it or wanting it. So allowing you to upload for free, I think that ship already passed. They had the DistroKid partnership. It didn't happen like they wanted to. They actually did Mm -hmm. try that, Mm -hmm. all right? Two, yeah, that's your service to distribute. Maybe their sense of quality control. Really, it's, it's the complexity, I feel like, in terms of music, no matter that, and things like that, that makes it a little bit harder, too. Yeah, exactly. And some of the licensing around it. So it's not even by choice. I think they would make it that way if things weren't set up the way they are. Yeah, but then every artist will be uploading a song with a fake Drake verse on it. And, you know, the right. issues that could come from things like that are much harder to deal with than the issue of getting the artist to pay nine ninety nine for the exactly. <laughs> distribution. Cause that's, yeah, cause exactly, because it is our distributors who usually handle all that mm-hmm. stuff. Oh, yeah, we can't take this. Uh, artists we work we uh just make sure everybody's credited and, you know, and getting their splits and all exactly, that stuff yeah exactly no, they're not dealing you know, with that I, and and bro one distribution has never been a free distribution of music has never been a free thing yeah. right they even alluded to it bro like labels had to pay for it at some point and now we have the digital companies and two the only reason that at least that's how i feel the only reason youtube has never made us do it 
is because, well, I think to your point earlier, they just kind of started that way and kind of got locked in. But then as they built, when they were this super fast growing platform, they got monetizable pretty quickly. You know what I'm saying? You talk yeah. about like so the, just the history of social platforms. YouTube is probably monetizable in like in this first like two or three years or something crazy like that. Now, if I remember correctly, and then they get backed by Google and they make hella ad revenue. They have so much money coming in from other places. They don't need to take your two dollars to upload. Versus people love to forget that Spotify is not profitable, and that is what is driving. Yeah. Well, and th this isn't a Spotify thing, which is you know it could be different with Deezer, um, which is actually I just thought about it too. That's crazy. This ain't even about Spotify. Spotify called it straight. I know, bro. <laughs> I know. He's like Spotify needs to do this. Exactly. I'm glad you brought it up because I was going to say that. But this goes back to that same, the same point because there is a Deezer, Spotify, Apple Music, mm -hmm. uh, Tidal. There's all these platforms. Things are so fragmented. That's another reason that the distribution services are there. They're also making your life easier. Yeah. There isn't, oh, I'm going to upload to YouTube and then I'm going to upload to YouTube Part 2 and Rumble and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can but it's not really fragmented to that in that way where you're going to do it as a norm. Exactly, bro. Like if, if every platform allows you to upload directly, then the argument would be, oh, I wish there was some type of service or platform that would allow me to upload to multiple places at once. We'd just be talking in circles, man. But let's further his point, though. He said, while raising that floor, let me see. Uh, while raising the floor for monetization is great for established artists, label artists, or viral artists, how are you going to throw viral artists in? Like, that's not even a real thing, bro. Like you can't even say that. Um, it's also very discouraging and costly for a new up-and-coming artist. Again, we're talking about six point four dollars a month. So if you're not making six forty-one, like you and, said. I, and I know it's hard to come by money. You know what I mean? Like starting up, I get it. I remember being in college and a five-dollar party is like I don't know about that. Artists below that threshold are already potentially spending thousands of dollars to get their music produced, mixed, mastered, and marketed. You might have to change that mix to not just be so heavy on the mixing and production. I don't know. Because, again, if you're marketing and you're spending thousands of dollars and you can't hit, that, uh, you know, mm. thousand streams a month, that's what we're here for. Just listen to these videos. Hopefully, at some point, you can get beyond that. Yeah. This system will require them to spend even more from marketing and promotion before they are seeing fruits of their labor. It's crazy, bro. It's, it's, He's not doing the math. That's all it is. He's bro. not doing the math. He's talking like an artist that, once again, forgets content exists. You know what I'm saying? What do you um, mean by that? I mean, he's talking about spend more, bro. Like, most of them don't have to spend that much money to begin with. You well, know what I'm there's yeah. a lot of artists that don't want to do content. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. This all well, comes back well. to work ethic, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you, like the, the art, that's why I say it's, it's a very specific demographic of artists that will be, I think, will be triggered by this feature. And it's the demographic of artists that are small and don't want to do the work not to be small. Mm. Like the, the entitled small artists. I hear that. <laughs> I, definitely, I definitely hear that, see where you're going. I mean, look, any kind of floor, any extra level of difficulty is, it sucks to hear in the music business. We know the music business isn't the easiest business. It's hard for artists to monetize mm -hmm. and things like that. I get that. At the same time, like when artists get into the bag of, well, they're making this so hard for me and the music shouldn't be so business heavy. It's like, you know you have that option to not be a part of the business and just be happy creating your art mm -hmm. if it truly is just for that purpose. Once you want to impact people, there's going to be barriers, other people, other agendas, other business that gets has to be had. Like So that's just is a part of the game. And yeah, I get it, though. Like A lot of it sucks in the music industry in general still is is effed up so i agree with that but this isn't one of those things that i, I think that merits that or over uh, that reaction it's a little bit hard let's talk about the fact that most artists fail to understand that it doesn't take forever to monetize your audience we had an artist literally begin to take off and make twenty thousand dollars from his brand new audience in the same month but how is that possible it's because we're in a new era, baby. Yes, you want to continue to build a relationship over time, but the first time you make money from your audience can happen today if you understand the new age music marketing funnel for artists. So if you want to hear about this approach and how you can apply it to yourself, I made a completely free video to watch at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You got to make sure you put the www or if you're on YouTube, you can find the link in the description.
and check out how we've helped monetize artists for completely free. I promise it'll completely change how you see things. Now, this person said Roosh did it. I think the separation between the pro and hobbyist is actually helpful, but I don't know about the stream count being the line in the sand. I know there's a lot of small artists right now that are serious and don't want to be considered hobbyists, and that's fair, but consider, but consider that there are also thousands of people who just want to make music for fun, which isn't a crime or anything, obviously, but then you also consider that those people and their songs are taking up the same airspace and part of their overall money pie. So do we really want everyone perceived on the same tier? All right. I think I know what he's saying. Mm -hmm. He's saying there's artists who have over a thousand streams per month that aren't necessarily serious. Think about a speed, right? Like, oh, I got a big audience or a Kai Sinat, Sinat. All right, I'm a streamer, really. I'm gonna drop some music for fun, and because of my audience, I'm gonna get over a thousand monthly listeners. So it doesn't necessarily weed out professional, and that I like. Like, this is a really solid point. Now, what else did he say? Um, bro just said 90% of the uploads had damn near no streams, so couldn't it be beneficial for those folks to have their own classification versus folks like that? <laughs> uh, Folks like, folks like us that do take it seriously, no matter how small, maybe using some other metric like how active are you in the industry versus simply how streams, how many streams you get, though otherwise it's hard to separate someone serious who just doesn't have reach versus someone's cousin who just fucking off. All right. So again, he made some solid points in terms of how you truly can consider somebody serious or not. But again, the companies have to focus on what they measure. Like, I don't know if you just had a meeting with your Corey, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, you go into a couple of networking events. I can't judge your seriousness if I'm Deezer in your music career beyond your streams. So I think they have to do something that's aligned with what they can measure themselves. And yeah. of course, it's still going to be imperfect. I Maybe there's a tier, but y'all wouldn't like that, right? Oh, now I got to pay for, it's like paying for verification on um, on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. 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 It would be similar to that. So would y'all want to pay an extra $7 to say, <laughs> hey, I'm a professional artist, and because of this, I'm going to get paid? I kind of like that, actually. From the company standpoint, I like the revenue. Like, from the artist standpoint, $7 isn't a lot of money. Yeah. It's not, right? Yeah. And yeah. then... I get to get separated and get paid way more while we can take away the money from anybody who doesn't want to get paid at all because they're like, I'm just throwing my music up here. So now we don't even have to pay them out at all, possibly. I don't know what legally you could work out there. But I would like the idea of maybe just doing some kind of paid program and then having an extra set of services that you might take on as a part of that. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, or, or they just add more tiers. You know, I think they could stretch it out. The paying the money, I think, would be, to your point, it would be hated by the artist community at first, but I think over time they would come to accept it. You know what I'm saying? Like, same. right, because of course you got to pay some more money. It's another charge, yeah. which I get. Yeah. But we're talking about specifically a quality tool for figuring out some level of seriousness. Yeah, especially if it came with features like you know the Instagram verification thing. It was all this hoopla about it until people realize that, oh, I get, like, hack support through this and, like, if my account gets hacked, yeah. then, you know, there's, there's some extra things that come with this if I hit the worst-case scenario. Now, to the point, you know, to your point, right, like, how how do you tell who is a serious artist versus a non-serious artist, right? He made, I think, his, his comment, another comment made the point of putting the resources into it and that should separate them. I think that's a big um, differentiator for, I guess, those of us at like the grassroots level of it, right? Like, like someone like us, where like I can tell the difference between someone that takes it seriously versus someone that doesn't buy how well their cover art looks, right? Or like how, yeah, um, how well uh, the quality of the song is. But now you take this away from music, and that argument doesn't necessarily fly in any other job or industry, right? Like I could go, I could go to Nike right now and buy, buy NFL level cleats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I could hire a personal yeah. trainer to run me through the same workouts that 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 some of the best wide receivers run through. You know what I'm saying? I could go on Google and get the same meal plans. At the end of the day, that does not make me as serious or on the same level as all of the athletes that have reached that level. You know what I'm saying? That is a fact. Because <laughs> there's a lot of people who do have resources. And still don't hit it. 
they still don't hit it. And on top of that, like the resources aren't as meaningful. Yeah. Because maybe I'm just rich or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, this doesn't mean as much. That's why, again, I think if we want to classify this, the answer is right now, paying some type of money because you have to manually and active make that choice. Now, of course, there might be somebody who I don't know how you define serious beyond that point, you know, like who, who we don't think is serious. But to me, yeah, that's that's as good as it gets, man. Yeah. That's as good as it gets. Yeah, because even in that, man, like there are, there are, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, high-level hobbyists, professional hobbyists, but there are, there are people that hit all of those markers that still will fall in the hobbyist category. You know what right. I'm saying? Not even just music, it's across anything like that. It's just good like that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you no, know, there, was, there was a point where my, me and my friend group had a tennis phase. You know what I'm saying? We all bought rackets. You know what I'm saying? We all used to used to go to the tennis courts at, at, at you know what I'm saying, like the, the wee hours of the morning. And You were on that level, yeah, bro? Yeah, yeah, bro. What? I was out there swinging that joint, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Swinging and hitting, too? Yeah, hell yeah. What, bro? <laughs> I was lit at that joint. But nowhere in the back of my brain did I think I was going to become a professional tennis player. Yeah. I knew that, hey, like, I was just willing to have the most amount of fun with this I could possibly have, and I understood in order for me to do that, I had to invest in mm. certain things to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's why I say, like, if now if someone had walked by the park one day and be like, oh, that nigga got the cleats on, he got the racket, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They got the full canister of balls. Yo, you must be trying to go pro, right? I'm like, no. Nah. Like, then I'm like, oh, but you look like you are. And it's like, yeah. no, nah, but I'm not. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing here. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing here. I would like to know what y'all think, artists. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I, I I came from an analogy. I kind of like the analogy. I want to see what the artists think. I do love the yeah. idea of verification for a simple a single platform. Problem yeah. is, I wouldn't want artists to have to pay seven dollars on Apple, Spotify. You know what I mean? Like now, that's going to add up, and that that becomes an expensive yeah. cost. It should just be a to distribution be thing. It should definitely be a distribution yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, may, yeah. I like that. Maybe yeah. your distributor somehow defi- decide if you're verified or not. I like that. Yeah, I like that. But yeah, what do y'all think? This is yet another clip. <laughs> Check out the next video because it's going to be just as fun to watch. Peace. Peace.